This is a gimme five show with Jay Walker and Tiffany. Yeah. You gon' have to give me five fingers on it right now. Wait until they see the strength and hear the wind. This black college live on the new five corner. Yo, you watching the black college live on morning. Lights out. You know how I run, this ain't for fun. I've been going done, they be still trying to clone it. From fam, you the grambling, I'm on it. Stand on it, marching, honey, how you want it? Before you see me blitz, might see a twist. They think it was a glitch, went from player to an owner. Now I just be doing what I wanna. Big body, I don't even need a sponsor. I be stacking comma at the comma, at the comma. Kiss a guy with good karma. Uh, I get it different, I be working on my off day. Into that paper, I go underlay. I did it different, I be working on my off day. Into that paper, I go have to get five fingers on it. Right now. What's good? What's good, everybody? And welcome to Black College Live. How y'all feeling out there? Well, are, are we in Florida? So if I'm in Florida this time of year, it must be time for the Florida Classic, the annual battle of Florida. So is it going to be Bethune-Cookman year to win it? How about the Rattlers of Florida A&M? OK, OK. I, I see you. And I'm going to say this. For the first time all season long, we can now officially say it. Florida A&M is host to the number one HBCU football team in the country. The Rattlers are rolling. <laughs> hey, yo, we tried to start off this show with a little cheer battle. We got to shout out the Bethune-Cookman Bad Cats because the we thought we were going to have showed up. Thank a you, cheer and they showed up thing. one time for my classmate Royce Reed, a Rattler, being the cheerleader now, coach I, of the Bad Cats. I, I'm going to let you get away with one more Rattler reference the rest of the show. So get it out your system, because she was a former queen of orange and green. So Miss Rattler, get it out your system right now. And we, then had let's move on. we had a little something. We had a little something we used to say. We used to say, fam, you. Fam, you. What, what? Fam, I love you. All right, all right, all right. That's all I had okay. to do. Okay, well, well, can I be fair? Yes. You know my favorite chant. Yes. Come don't, on. Don't, 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 don't. Wildcat, hey. Don't, 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 don't. Don't, 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 don't. Don't, 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 don't. Don't, 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 don't. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. We got to calm them right, down. We got to right, calm them down. All right, let's get to work. Hey, let's get to it. We are <laughs> on the Pepsi stage. So delighted to be here with you from O-Town. And Jay, when we look at what's happening this weekend, so much going down. My big question to you is, partner, who's going to win the MEAC? I finally feel good and proud of America's black college. My alma mater, Howard oh. University, has a chance to make it to the Cricket Celebration Bowl with the win over a very tough Morgan State defense. They shocked the world when they beat North Carolina Central a week ago. We'll see if the Bison can keep it going. Quarterback Quinn Williams is the key. They got some great running backs. Eden James is going to be a star. But right now, the Bison control their own destiny. They're one game away from making it to the Celebration Bowl. Don't let America down. Okay, Jay. All right, we're going to move on here because you already talked about Florida A&M. They locked up the SWAC East. But over in the SWAC West, we have been talking all season long, and really it's survival of the fittest this weekend, Jay. Yeah, the SWAC Wacky Wacky West is still up for grabs. You've got three teams that can make it. Grambling can make it if two teams lose. Alcorn State can make it if Prairie View loses. And if Prairie View can win, they control their own destiny. But that has not been the case. They've got tough games up there. Alcorn has to go take on Jackson State. That's not an easy task. Prairie View has to travel to Alabama State. That's not an easy task. So watch out. I would not be surprised if the G-Men snuck in with a victory in the Bayou Classic to make it to face Florida A&M in the SWAC championship. And remember, they're the only team out of the SWAC to have won a celebration bowl. Meanwhile, let's stay in the boot, Louisiana, the state of Louisiana, and some shakeup at Southern University as they fire their head coach, Eric Dooley, before the end of the season. Yeah, it, and that was like a statement fire. I think, you know, back in the day in the SWAC, they would like fire a coach at halftime. I think if you fired a coach at Southern 
before the Bayou Classic, that's like firing a coach at halftime. Eric Dooley loves Southern, but after two years, they're making a move in another direction. So unfortunate, but it's that time of year where you start to see coaches lose their job. All right, Benedict's College out of Division Two. They have been rolling this season. Another perfect regular season. They won the SIAC championship, Jay, and they're headed to the Division Two playoffs. And they're hot. And I think all the HBCU community knows that they're the best Division Two HBCU out there. But we're ready for you guys to make a statement. You need to win in the postseason. Tennis Berry, one of the hottest names in coaching right now. But right now, I think he'll agree, the Tigers must win in postseason to make all of HBCU fans proud. All right, Jay, we are here at the Florida Blue Florida Classic. And obviously, there's so much rivalry that goes on between the two. The Battle of the Bands, obviously one of them. Plus, Jay's season honors coming up after the break. Championship football, the exciting sound of iconic marching bands, an HBCU family reunion, the Cricket Celebration Bowl, December 16th in the ATL, MEAC champion, SWAC champion, a rivalry matchup at one of the world's finest venues. The celebration starts early with the Coca-Cola fan experience and continues until an HBCU national champion is crowned. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is the place you'll want to be. For more information, visit the celebrationbowl.com. A champion will rise. This is where the formula ends and the magic begins. We take the mold, shake the mold, and break the mold. From late nights in the gym to later nights in the library, we grind. Because if you think greatness is a game, think again. Here, nothing shines unless we all do. Got our star watch player of the week. It's Quentin Williams out of Howard University. The quarterback recorded a season high four touchdowns in the Bison's win over number seven North Carolina Central at the time. He completed 23 of 33 passes for 277 yards with three touchdowns and rushed four times, including a touchdown as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our Black College Live YouTube channel and follow on these social platforms. What's up, everybody? Here are this week's Cricket Celebration Bowl Power Rankings. Coming in at number five, how about the job that Coach Eddie Robinson has done down in Montgomery, Alabama for Alabama State? The Hornets prove they've got some sting left in that stinger as they finish the season strong. At number four, the Bison from Howard University pulling off the biggest upset of the season. Head coach Larry Scott can be proud of his boys. They've had an up and down season, but at the end of the day, they control their own destiny in a quest to make it to Atlanta for the Cricket Celebration Bowl. At number three, oh, they've been steady all season long. T.C. Taylor and the Jackson State Tigers continue to get their winning ways. They've got one more game coming up this week versus a very tough Alcorn State team to see if maybe they can get an impressive resume to make it to the FCS playoffs. At number two, the former number one team in HBCU football, it's North Carolina Central University. Trey Oliver's squad coming off a loss for the first time in a long time, but they still come in at number two with all the star power that they've amassed in dorm. And the new number one team in HBCU football are the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Willie Simmons' team has been the number two team for a long time, but they seem primed and poised to be the number one team in HBCU football. Quarterback Jeremy Musa continues to dazzle, and the Rattlers are hot. Not quite making a list on the bubble, possibly the HBCU team of the year, it's the Tigers of Benedict College. Head coach Dennis Berry and the Tigers finished off an undefeated regular season in Columbia, South Carolina. That's this week's HBCU Power Rankings. We got more football to go, but for right now, that's what's up. On the highest of seven hills in Tallahassee, Florida, sits a university that produces legends, neurosurgeons, business executives, princesses, comedians, movie moguls, NFL players, broadcast executives, 
and conference champions. Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. You can get anywhere from FAMU. It has never been more exciting to be a fan of HBCU marching bands as ESPN's Band of the Year will debut this December. The championship will be the culmination of a season-long competition where band's halftime performances will be ranked by a committee of marching band experts. Four bands, the top two from Division I and Division II, will earn the right to compete for the national title in Atlanta on December 15th, the night before the Cricket Celebration Bowl. For more information, visit ESPNBandOfTheYear.com. Jay, you know we like to always shout out the Divine Nine Greeks of the Week. Always. But this time we have a junior version of them. The Omega Stepladder is here to do their thing. Let's go. Here we go. Give it up for the Omega Lamplighters. Thank you Thank so much. Thank y'all so much. Give it up for them. The youngsters getting it going. Hey. Hey, look. Jay. DJ HD said he had a little something, something for the bad cats. So they're going to break us off with a little something right here. diversity where you can meet friends from all over the world expanding your horizon it's a place where learning extends beyond the classroom where professors are not just educators they're mentors guiding you towards success where community matters and we take pride in giving back to those around us it's where athletes pour their hearts into the game leaving nothing behind on the field where dreams take shape and futures are built. Bethune-Cookman University, where your story becomes a legacy. This is where the formula ends and the magic begins. We take the mold, shake the mold, and break the mold. From late nights in the gym to later nights in the library, we grind. Because if you think greatness is a game, think again. Here, nothing shines unless we all do. All right, welcome back to Black College Live. And you know we like to Spotlight, some illustrious alumnus of each university. And for this Florida Classic Edition, Jay, you're going to take one and I'm going to take one. And I'm okay. going to start it off with a rattler, I'm pioneering sure. woman, 
Carrie P. Meek. And Carrie P. Meek, you may have heard of her, a representative who was born and raised right here in the Sunshine State. She would go on to graduate from Florida A&M University and would go on to run for office, becoming the first African-American woman to be elected to the Florida State Senate in 1982. Ten years later, she would be a trailblazer once more, elected as the U.S. representative in the state of Florida in 1992, the first time since Reconstruction that an African-American had been elected to Congress. Meanwhile, her years as a state senator and representative, here are a few of her accomplishments. It included creating thousands of affordable housing units, helping to provide over a million, hundred million dollars for recovery efforts from Hurricane Andrew and improving Dade County's transit system airport and seaport system as she hailed from the Miami area and was a huge supporter of the Florida Classic. Okay, okay, you got your rattler in. Well, this is a classic, so I'm going to go on the Bethune-Cookman side. And when I think about Bethune-Cookman, I'm thinking about the athletics, and I'm thinking about the legend who is Cy McLaren. If you don't know about Coach Cy McLaren, you're going to learn. He started off his illustrious athletic career at Bethune-Cookman, where he earned 12 varsity letters in football, basketball, and track and field, and went on to become the very first Bethune-Cookman player to be drafted to the National Football League in 1953. After doing a two-year dual service, McLaren played in the NFL for six seasons before returning to his alma mater as the basketball and football coach. He was the MEAC coach of the year in basketball in 1989 and the football coach of the year in 1994. McLaren won over 900 basketball and football games combined during his time. A Bethune-Cookman legend, Cy McLaren. All right, let's give it up. And as we continue to talk more about Florida a and and Bethune-Cookman, let's broaden the scope here, Jay, because we've got to get into Jay's Give Me Five. five. Okay, it's that time of year for the Give Me Five. And I think some people here are going to like this, all right? So I'm going to give you the five honors, those people that had outstanding seasons. Starting off with number five, my HBCU football team of the year, well, the team that went undefeated, the Tigers of Benedict College, led by Chennis Berry, they're coming to number five as my team of the year. My freshman of the year is a guy named Jawan Taylor Howe. Jawan Howe played running back for South Carolina State, rushed for 265 yards in a single game. He's a special talent. Coming in at number three, the defensive player of the year is linebacker Eric Hunter from Morgan State University. Hunter had a fantastic season, take care of business. Hunter's a good one. I also thought Bubba Adams could have been on that list too. Number two, the HBCU player of the year is quarterback Davius Richard from North Carolina Central University. Although they took a loss last week, he's had a fantastic season and career in Durham. And number one, the number one award for the coach of the year, Willie Simmons, Florida A&M, the HBCU Coach of the Year, the fantastic job he did. And then we're talking, you know, these postseason accolades. I got to throw it in there. My HBCU Band of the Year, the Human Jukebox of Southern University. I saw them show up and show out all season long. All right, and there we'll have the Band of the Year competition at the end of the season on December 15th. Meanwhile, Tiff's two cents. I'm going to chime in with the impact transfer okay. of the year. You know, there's a lot of movement in the college football landscape. Marcus Riley of Florida A&M started his career and graduated from Bethune-Cookman and now is an impact player for Florida A&M. Also, the story of the year, Miguel Rojo, Rio of Norfolk State. He had to sit out a year because of the language barrier. He came over from Central America, and the idea for him to come back and to have the impact that he's had on the Spartans is just remarkable. It's a human interest story you can appreciate. Tiff Two Cents, you got it right. I like that I, That impact transfer. That's a little bit different right there because it's tough. When, how do you go from Bethune-Cookman to Florida A&M? And I wouldn't accept that, but that's in, the way it in, is. In now Riley's defense, he grew up in Tallahassee, so he okay. decided to go back to the capital city. Gotcha. All right, so we will ask a student or an alumni just about what they think it's so special about the Florida Classic. Meanwhile, you'll want to stay tuned for more right here on Black College Live. Yo, what it is? Your boy DJ Depp checking in. You already know I rep that fam, you that Florida and the University, HBCU to the fullest, and I also represent Black College Live. You know what it is. It has never been more exciting to be a fan of HBCU marching bands 
as ESPN's Band of the Year will debut this December. The championship will be the culmination of a season-long competition where band's halftime performances will be ranked by a committee of marching band experts. Four bands, the top two from Division I and Division II, will earn the right to compete for the national title in Atlanta on December 15th, the night before the Cricket Celebration Bowl. For more information, visit ESPNBandOfTheYear.com. Championship football, the exciting sound of iconic marching bands, an HBCU family reunion, the Cricket Celebration Bowl, December 16th in the ATL, MEAC champion, SWAC champion, a rivalry matchup at one of the world's finest venues. The celebration starts early with the Coca-Cola fan experience and continues until an HBCU national champion is crowned. Mercedes-Benz Stadium is the place you'll want to be. For more information, visit the Celebration Bowl. A champion will rise. Hey, Jay and Tiff, Black College Live here with the prediction for this week. I tell you, three good games here. Howard versus Morgan, Jackson State versus Alcorn State, Florida A&M versus Bethune. That first game, Howard, Howard on last week defeating North Carolina Central like they did. I mean, that, they scored enough points for two years. I'm going to go with Howard University ver, uh, defeating Morgan State. Game two, Jackson State versus Alcorn. Alcorn is playing good this time of the year. I think they had a one uh, a loss in the last two weeks, and but they're a seasoned staff, and I feel that Alcorn would defeat Jackson State. Game three is a no-brainer, but Bethune did defeat Alabama AM. I was sur I was surprised about that that game. So but Florida AM is playing really good football. Uh, through the stretch and all year long in the last couple of years. I think Florida a was ready to win a SWAC championship. So I'm going with Florida a &M, uh defeating Bethune-Cookman. See you at the SWAC championship. Welcome back to Black College Live Fan Fest at the Florida Blue Florida Classic on the Pepsi stage with my boy Jay Walker, it's your girl Tiffany Green, and now we get into the meat of it, Jay. Now we talk football. Let's talk your football. We got talk. a game that's going to take place here. Yeah. I'm in town because there's a big football game. Uh huh. Before we chime in though with that, I've got to know when you look at a couple of games this weekend, really important, and the Soul Bowl, Alcorn State versus Jackson State. It's in. Jackson, Mississippi. How do you see that playing out? Wow, you know, Jackson State is the number three team in HBCU football for a reason. Alcorn has more to play for, but I just think it's going to be tough for the Braves coming off that upset loss last week. I'm actually going with Jackson State to beat Alcorn and end the Braves season. All right, we had an opportunity to catch up with Coach Raymond Woody Jr. for Bethune Cookman and Willie Simmons of Florida A&M to hear what they think about what is so special and how they're preparing for the Florida Classic. Just getting these guys to understand how to finish. And, and that's what we've been talking about throughout, you know, the, uh, the spring, the summer, the fall, you know, putting the right pieces together and finishing games. And that's some of the thing that we've been stressing to our guys, you know, whether it was injuries here, injuries, there's no excuses, blame the one. I mean, every week, every day we prepare to finish everything that we start. We all know how important this game is in the grand scheme of things. You know, for the first time, it doesn't really have any bearing on anyone's postseason implications. Um, but indeed, it's still the biggest rivalry, I think, in black college sports, one of the biggest in all of college athletics. And so we're excited about the opportunity, looking forward to a, a great uh, week of events leading up to the to the game. And um, this is Coach Wood's first um, time as a head football coach. I remember my first time in 2018, and uh, it's, it's everything that people build it up to be and more. So, Jay, as we heard the coaches say, you know, obviously everyone has to focus in. This is for bragging rights. This is important. It doesn't matter what games you've won before or after. You must win this Florida Classic. So break down the matchup for me. Well, I mean, normally you throw the records out when Florida A&M is playing Bethune-Cookman. We've seen it so hard for so often. In this case here, Bethune-Cookman has nothing to lose it would make their season if they beat Florida A&M the last game of the year. Florida A&M has clinched so early. They took care of their business. I think they're going to come out a little bit lackadaisical, 
but I do believe that Florida A&M is the reason they're the number one team in HBCU football. It's going to be a contest. It's not going to be a blowout any way or the other. We have to call the game, so we can't predict it. But I want to know, who do y'all think is going to win the game? Is it going to be Florida A&M? Uh, the, the Rattlers? Okay. All right. Anybody think the Wildcats are going to win the game today? Well, okay. the people's poll says it's going to be the Rattlers, but every time that happens, what do I always say? It's always something with Florida A&M. Well, the good news is they've won the last two, Jay, so I'll say there. And they're trying to go undefeated in the SWAC since moving over to the conference. However, Bethune-Cookman has won their last two games, so it could be a very interesting matchup. We expect it to be just that. Meanwhile, partner, appreciate you being here. Glad you enjoyed this Florida oh, Classic. Man, I hope y'all enjoyed it, seeing y'all in Florida around here. Enjoy the game. Black College Live. Woo! We out. Yeah. This is a Gimme Five show with Jay Walker and Tiffany. Yeah. You gon' have to give me five fingers on it right now. Wait until they see the strength and hear the wind. It's Black College Live. I'ma need five on it. If they put overtime on it, lights out. You know how I run, this ain't for fun. I've been going done, they be still trying to clone it. From fam, you the Grambling, I'm on it. Stand on it. March